Are you getting the feeling the Edge radio broadcast is growing? Well, if so, you're right. The Edge program has been hitting the bullseye of what people are interested in. Do you feel like I do? We're now broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week from the new EBN, the Edge Broadcasting Network. We've added a web store. We're making a difference in the search for truth. And we're sharing our success with you. Do you feel like I do? From around the world, people are listening. They're sending in their stories and comments. They're making guest suggestions. They're telling their friends about the show. Do you feel like I do? Listen every Saturday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and feel like I do, right here on this station. All right, we're back on Spiritually Speaking. I'm your host, Larry Cat, and we have a guest with us today. His name is Paul Jamerson, and he's one of our correspondents from Australia. And we're going to have a general conversation today about a various number of things. We're going to talk about martial law. We're going to talk about uh, dreams and uh, what else we can dig up during this conversation. And uh, we're going to get with it. Paul, you with us here? Yes, I am, sir. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you. And Thank uh, you for having me. How's the weather over there? Cold, cold, and cold again. <laughs> well, here in the uh, great state of Indiana in the United States, it's uh, wet and rainy, so not much better, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So what you got for us today? Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, like dreams and uh, a, l a little bit of martial law. Um, because just before... Um, we we're doing we're doing this uh, presentation, this um, um, interview. Um, I had a horrible, horrible nightmare, if you will. Um, I, I had a dream that all these like goats, these spirits, were like in this room, and there, there was like a like another ghost. Uh, this is just before I woke up before, because um, you know time difference, you know. And thank mm. God I woke up. It was a horrible nightmare, Larry. Mm. Uh, and. Uh, and it was awful. It was awful. The more closer I came to this one door, it like the the, the voices got louder and like the the uh, it was just really kind of scary. I I, I can't really um, say what words to describe it, but it, it was just horrible uh, about dreams. I I I, I, I totally dislike uh, nightmares. I can't stand them. I, I regularly have them now and again. Um, but yeah, I. I I just feel like sharing that. That's all. Like the nightmare I just had. Hmm. hmm. So, so you got closer to the door and you heard screams. You said. Yeah, it, it was. It was like really like tormented souls. Like I was walking down this hor corridor, and um, this one room. It was. It was completely like I could tell there were spirits in it. It was very vivid, and um, it was. It was a horrible feeling that I had inside of my body. And uh, the more closer I got to the actual door to see through, it had like a glass thing thing into it. The more worse it got of the um, of of the energy in the room, and um, and the more frightened I got. So the more further away I got from it, the more uh, less intense it got. But um, uh, I, I I don't know. It's hard to put into words, really. Um, I uh, that was just one nightmare, but. I won't get into all the nightmare factors, but oh my goodness, I I I I wonder about nightmares sometimes, Larry. Like, is it just a figment of the imagination, or is it a real thing? I I sometimes ponder that, Larry. Well, I ponder that myself on, on many occasion. I've had dreams that, um, to be quite honest, have not come true uh, in some form or fashion. Maybe not exactly as I dreamed them, but close enough that made me remember that I had that dream before. Uh, I remember yeah. uh, certain things are that I've gone through in life that had a sort of a deja vu effect that I stopped and thought about it and remembered I had a dream about something very very similar to this that uh, came to pass um, I don't know I think um, I've pondered that myself many times I believe that um, you know uh, 
God, the infinite power that he has, is able to uh, inform us of things in any fashion he so desires to do so. Um, and I don't think that uh, it mentions many times in the Bibles about coming to us in our dreams. Um, so um, so I, I, I think that sometimes uh, it may be um, our over-imagination. Um, I've had some really funky, weird dreams that couldn't possibly oh, have to do anything in life. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> on the other hand, but... Uh, uh, you know, clowns chase me down a down a down a hill, throwing balloons at me. I don't think anything new with real life, but uh, <laughs> but uh, had a dream like that one time. I remember that one. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, but uh, I have had dreams right. of a more serious nature that, uh, like I said, have yeah. come to pass. And uh, so I think it's sometimes God's trying to warn us or get us prepared sometime mentally uh, for things to come. Oh, so that's definitely. Ah, uh, I can't stand clowns. I can't stand clowns myself. Oh man. Uh, I didn't have it's a. Like, uh, I didn't have a real okay. problem with I didn't have a real problem with clowns until I saw that movie. I don't know if you've seen a movie called Stephen King. It. Yes. Oh yeah. yes. Oh after, yes. After that, clowns weren't appealing to me as much as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that one scene of a little boy. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I got plenty of balloons down here, all kinds of colors. You know, like, oh, it's just creepy, creepy, creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. It's like um, and uh, I went. Like, Go on about um, nightmares for too long, but I, as a child, I used to have repeated dreams of these two face masks. Um, it was it was kind of like it, it, almost every single night. I used to wake up not just with a face mask, but um, like multiple times, I wake up screaming. Like it would be like future visions of people dying and all, and all those types of things. Now I won't touch on that, but um, um, uh, just before you ask me the question, what what are your thoughts on martial law, Mr. Larry Kennett? Well. <coughs> I'll be honest with you. I have a military background. Uh, I worked with the United oh. States Air Force uh, for three years, uh, uh, not in an active far as point of um, any operations outside the United States. I did mostly search and rescue with what they call the Civil Air Patrol. It's a branch of the United States Air Force. Um, and um, martial law, it, it, it's a... You know, definition of the system of rules that takes effect when the military takes control of a normal administrative of administration of justice um, and martial law I can't think it have to be a very extreme case that martial law would have to be imposed um, I do but too. But, uh, but on the other hand I, I, I agree with some of our edge staff that we've had these conversations in our in our uh, weekly meetings and things that um, that the United States I don't know how it is over in the countries because I'm be honest with them um, when it comes to certain research on the subject, I get lazy. So, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'll be frank with you. But uh, you know, I obviously live in the United States. I can uh, things are more prevalent, you know, on the media and, and things across the okay. um, our email and, and web and things of that nature. But yeah. I believe the United States is going to a point that they're trying to get the idea of martial law, uh, a night that something more of a, a relaxed thing and more of a thing that we can easily transition into. Uh, the recent military activities in the, in the Indianapolis area, in my hometown here, uh, they had uh, military maneuvering training exercises going all across uh, Indianapolis and in the state of Indiana. And I actually, to be honest with you, there's a park not far from my house here, and uh, it was called Edinburgh, um, uh, Indianapolis Edinburgh Park there. And we went over there one night, and I saw, uh, and again, being from military background, I know when I can hear military, the military helicopters versus regular everyday choppers you hear in the air and uh, obviously I heard the, the difference in the pitch and I knew something was going on so we drove and I followed the noise of my wife in the car and um, they were actually landing AH-64 Apache attack helicopters in the Edinburgh City Park um, Wow. and uh, it was quite disturbing really to be honest with you I don't know if you're familiar with that aircraft but that aircraft has a 50 millimeter um, basically what they call a, um, um, a um, Gatling gun type thing. It's a turret gun on the front of that thing. Uh, oh, and, it's, and it's operated um, by the visor of the individual in the front seat. It's a two-seat helicopter. One sits low, one's in the other. The co-pilot kind of sits behind him up top. Uh, and uh, they have a little visor that comes down with a little um, uh, aiming device. And it's electronically controlled. And wherever that pilot looks, that gun turns. Now, they were saying they were doing this for the reason of landing there for touch-and-go um, practicing for in an um, a urban-type you know situation if they were in another country. Uh, but what I found disturbing, as I was about 100 feet from this aircraft, 
as I got pretty close, I could see that gun moving as they were land as they were hovering right about maybe three or four feet above the ground. They were making that gun turret move, and that kind of bothered me because there's no reason why that gun turret need to be moved if they were just practicing touch and go, you know, landing and taking off quickly. So um, I don't know.